Welcome to part two in our carbohydrate series. In this section, we will cover monosaccharide cyclization. Monosaccharides that are five or six carbons in length have the right bond angles to spontaneously form either a furan or pyran ring structure. Note that one of the hydroxyl oxygens is included as a member of the ring structure. This slide shows the cyclization of glucose. For this ring cyclization, the oxygen located on carbon five attacks carbon one that contains the aldehyde functional group. As the covalent bond between the oxygen of carbon five forms with carbon one, the double bond of the aldehyde breaks and forms a new bond with a proton that is free floating in the environment of the cell or solution. In the closed cyclic form, this forms a new hydroxyl group and adds a new stereocenter into the sugar. When converting a Fischer projection into the cyclic ring structure, it's important to keep track of the carbon numbers. This will help you correctly place the hydroxyl groups in the correct conformation. Note that in the Fischer projection, the hydroxyls on the right hand side are in the down conformation in the cyclic Haworth projection. Hydroxyls on the left hand side of the Fischer projection are in the up conformation in the ring structure. In this ring closure, the new hydroxyl formed at the C1 position is in the down conformation, although it could have closed in the up conformation. This is the new stereocenter that is formed during cyclization. The remaining stereocenter should remain in the same position as in the Fischer projection. The carbon two hydroxyl is on the right side of the Fischer projection and is in the down conformation on the ring structure. Carbon three on the left and up on the ring structure. Carbon four on the right and down on the ring structure and the oxygen of carbon five is in the ring structure. Thus, when we look at the Fischer projection, you must think to rotate the position of the OH on carbon five so that it's in line with the main chain. This will place the oxygen in line with the ring structure and it shifts the CH2OH group to the left hand side in the Fischer projection. Since the CH2OH group ends up on the left hand side of the Fischer projection, it has to be in the up conformation in the Haworth projection. The cyclization reaction is the one that you have learned previously in organic chemistry. It is essentially the reaction of an alcohol with an aldehyde to form the hemiacetal. In the case of the ketose, a reaction of a ketone with an alcohol will form the hemiketal. If we look at the closed ring structure of glucose again, we can identify the hemiacetal that is formed during the reaction of the carbon five alcohol with the carbon one aldehyde. Ketose cyclization is similar. The alcohol group of carbon five reacts with the ketone group of carbon two to form the hemiketal. In this case, the new hydroxyl group that is formed from the ketone is shown in the up conformation on the ring. It could also be formed in the down conformation. Thus cyclization results in the formation of a new stereocenter at the ring closure position. These new isomers are called anomers or anomeric pairs. 
and the carbon that previously contained the aldehyde or the ketone is called the anomeric carbon. In the case of glucose, this is the C1 carbon. You can always easily identify the anomeric carbon of a cyclic sugar molecule as it will be the only one that's bonded to two different oxygen atoms. All of the other carbons are only bonded to one oxygen. During the ring cyclization, two potential isomers can form either the alpha conformation or the beta conformation. In the alpha conformation, the functional groups extending from the carbons attached to the ring oxygen, the OH of carbon 1 and the CH2OH extending off of carbon 5 are in the trans conformation extending above and below the ring structure. In the beta conformation, these positions are in the cis conformation on the same side of the ring structure. The formation of the anomers does not change the name of the sugar. It is still D-glucose. We now need to add in the cyclic nature of the molecule and the designation of the new anomer alpha or beta into the name. To designate a six-membered ring structure, drop the SE from glucose and replace it with pyranose. Add in alpha or beta designations at the beginning of the name. D-glucose forming the cyclized structure with the new hydroxyl in the down conformation becomes alpha-D-glucopyranose. Likewise, the anomer in the cis conformation becomes beta-D-glucopyranose. Cyclization of fructose can form either the six-membered ring or the five-membered ring. The beta form of the five-membered ring is shown here. Beta-D-fructofuranose is the sweetest form of D-fructose. Come back to this slide and practice cyclizing D-fructose into these four different conformations. In reality, cyclized sugars, for the most part, prefer to be in the chair conformation. Sometimes they can be in the boat conformation as well. Thus, it's useful to be able to recognize the stereocenters in the chair conformation. Recall that in the Fisher projection, right is down on the ring structure and left is up on the ring. In the chair conformation, look at the bond angles at the different positions of the sugars that indicate down on the ring or up on the ring structure. The squiggly line at C1 indicates that the ring closure could create either the new anomer in the alpha or down trans conformation or the beta up or cis conformation. Take some time to learn the different ways to view sugar monomers. You will be required to form the cyclized sugar if given the Fisher projection. You should be able to form any of the cyclic presentations shown here, the Haworth, chair, or line angle conformations. Overall in this section, you learned about the cyclization of monosaccharides. You should be able to cyclize a linear sugar into the ring conformation, recognize the formation of the hemiacetal or hemiketal structures, identify the anomeric carbon positions, distinguish between the alpha and beta anomers, and perform anomer naming if given the linear name of the sugar.